Hello, everyone, and welcome to the second part of this Salvage Priority List lesson. In this section, we will talk about how to prepare a priority list focusing above all on the different criteria that can be used for choosing the artworks to be included in the list. So here you will see the second part of our lesson. So how to do a priority list? Creating a priority list can be a very demanding and time-consuming activity for a cultural heritage institution. In fact, it requires carrying out a recognized recognizance of the entire collection in order to be able to evaluate, in case of emergency, which artworks must be absolutely saved and which ones could be more vulnerable to a particular threat. So to try to give a series of steps and a logical order to the important activities for the creation of a priority list, I decided to base myself on these extremely complete and exhaustive publication of the Arts Council UK. This document has been constructed, constructed as a checklist and it allows museums, archives and libraries to proceed with the different necessary activities in a logical and effective way. The first step for creating a priority list is obviously to choose the object that must be included. These may seem like the most trivial and easy step, but in reality, in our experience, it is the most difficult. This is, in fact, the step in which a museum must decide which are the most important artworks of the collection. It is important to proceed step by step and to try to establish rules and logical criteria to avoid making an ex exclusively subjective and emotional choice. In fact, it is necessary to be able to, ta to take a step back and observe the museum from a broader point of view that also considers its history, the community that revolves around it, and the primary objective of the collection itself. It is therefore good to make a choice starting from three fundamental principles. First of all, the mission of the museum. Why was the museum created? Why is it important to that site, to that area? What distinguishes the museum and the collection from others? These are the fundamental questions to ask yourself, the answer to which should already lay the foundation for a first screening of the collection. Secondly, it is important to evaluate the origin of the artworks. These may seem obvious, but it can really make a difference because it allows you to try to find a link between the, con the museum's artworks with the local history and decide if the process of production, exhibition, sale, loan of the artworks can be significant for a community. Finally, it is important to grasp which artworks are the most important to the community that revolves around the museum. A museum is always the representation of a culture and of an identity. So for this reason, the works that convey this message should be considered in an emergency. In general, the object that must be included in a priority list can be chosen starting from many different criteria. It is important to remember that there is no right, right or wrong choice. The only wrong choice is the one that does not take into consideration the museum's identity and mission during the selection process. It is also important to consider that no matter how much one tries to make the choice as objective as possible, 
it is a, a decision that will always have a percentage of subjectivities. So for this reason, it is important to review and update the priority list to ensure they are always in line with the museum's management strategy and community perspective. The first criterion that can be used for the choice is the economic one. Therefore, the artworks that have the greater economic value of a greater insurance value are selected. These may seem like a very cynical and detached criterion, but in reality, it guarantees an excellent level of objectivities, objectivity which can make the choice easier. Furthermore, if the estimates have been made adequately, they already reflect many cultural and historical elements of the artworks. Another criterion can be the historical one. In this case, the oldest, the oldest artworks or those most relevant to the history of a place can be chosen. In order to make a choice following this criterion, it is essential to carry out an in-depth archival research on the works and their relationship with the museum. In this group, we can also include artworks that have been created on the occasion of political, historical, cultural events that are particularly relevant to a nation, such as wars, armistice, appointments of new rulers and other events. The third method is to choose the works that are most relevant to the community surrounding the museum. In this case, the artworks that most of all reflect the identity, the culture and the traditions of the community that live near the museum, who experience it and who visit it will have to be chosen. In this case, it is good to involve the community in the choice, submitting them surveys, questionnaires, inviting them to the museum and getting help in the decision. In this process, you may discover that the artworks that are most relevant to the community are not those which are considered most relevant by the museum staff and you may use this opportunity to improve your management strategy. Another criterion of choice is the symbolic one. Therefore, the choice is aimed at those artworks which are the vehicle of particularly important symbolic messages. Just think of the immense variety and priceless value of artworks that have been created in religious contexts. For us in Italy, but in general throughout Europe, the artworks created in religious concepts are re content, sorry, are truly innumerable and are some of the most important and valuable. At this juncture, it is good to think about inclusive inclusiveness and also consider the important religious minorities that can be part of the community that revolves around the museum. Another factor may be linked to the rarity of the artworks. In this case, those rare objects of which there are few examples in our museums become fundamental. For this criterion, again, careful archival research can be very useful, as well as an in-depth study of the materials. A final criterion can be linked to authenticity. Therefore, the choice is directed towards those artworks whose origin is clear and trustable and is relevant for, to the history of the museum itself. Archival research and due diligence process are also useful in this case. Due diligence is a study and a research activity that allows the reconstruction of the history of production and of the buying and selling exchanges 
that took place on the artwork. With this procedure, artworks whose origin is uncertain or could even come from illicit trafficking or past war crimes could be identified. In any case, whichever criterion one chooses to use, as I've, uh, I have already stated before, the choice depends only on the management strategy of the museum. It is important that this choice clearly and definably reflects the museum's identity and mission, and that is not left to chance. So thank you very much. This is the end of part two, and we'll see the next steps in part three of this lesson.